this video, we will discuss how to prepare our lab notebook before each experiment. Keeping a written record of experiments and observations is essential for scientific research, and using a lab notebook is one of the best ways to track that information. The process of preparing a lab notebook has a threefold purpose. First, it deepens our understanding of the upcoming experiment. Second, it maintains the organization of the data and observations to be gathered. And last, it ensures awareness of potential safety hazards linked to the experiment. So we must have prepared notebook pages in advance of each experiment. Why is it important to prepare the lab notebook before the experiment? Select all that apply. As we discussed earlier, preparing the notebook pages serves all three purposes. Now that we know why it is important to prepare the lab notebook before heading into the lab, let's talk about how to do it. First things first, the tools we need include a lab notebook, a pen, and a lab manual. The lab notebook must be a physical notebook with a securely bound series of pages. We should not use loose papers. Some courses might require a special lab notebook with carbon copy pages included. For other courses, you may work with any notebook as long as the pages are securely bound together. Make sure that you buy the correct type of notebook that your instructor has requested. In addition, this notebook should be designed solely for the lab. Do not combine the study notes or other lecture materials in this notebook. Because lab notebooks will be used in lab, the potential for them to become contaminated or damaged is high. For similar reasons, we should not prepare the lab notebook digitally using a tablet or laptop because we don't want to have chemicals spilled on them. That would be an expensive accident. To write in the notebook, we always use an ink pen, not a pencil or anything erasable. One rationale behind this is that scientists should always report data that they observe directly from the experiment and never falsify or modify data. Lab notebooks are the permanent, unchanging record of the experiment, so they must be complete and unchangeable. Similarly, if you write something wrong in your notebook and corrections are necessary, never erase or remove a page. We should never use whiteout tape to correct the mistake. Instead, use a single line to strike out the incorrect entry. When keeping a research record, it is also a good habit of initialing and dating any corrections you made in the notebook. The last thing we need to prepare the notebook is the lab manual or experimental protocol, which is going to be provided by the lab instructor prior to the lab. The manual includes most of the information we need to prepare for the lab, and we will talk about how to transfer the information in the manual to our notebook later in this video. Which of the following tools are required for preparing the notebook in our general chemistry lab? Remember, you will need a pen, the lab manual, and a notebook. The specific type of notebook will depend on the course. Now that we have the right tools, let's talk about the general organization of the notebook pages. If you are preparing your notebook for an upcoming experiment, we recommend that you start writing your notebook pages as you are following along with this video. First, each page of the notebook should include a header and a footer. The header should have your name, the date of the experiment, and the title or number of the experiment. The footer should include the page number. At the top of the first page, we should leave space to write down our lab partner's name, if you work with one for the experiment and the name of your lab instructor. These will be filled in during the experiment. Then, we should write out the complete title of the experiment we will perform. The first part of the main text is the objectives of this experiment. The objectives are usually provided in the lab manual. However, to save time, instead of copying the objectives word for word, we can simplify or summarize them in our own words. The second part of the main text is the procedure for the experiment. Our goal here is to present a step-by-step -step procedure that is easy to follow during the experiment. The procedure provided in the lab manual is usually very long and comprehensive. They are designed to help us fully understand the operation. 
However, it is not necessary to copy down every single word. That would be a huge waste of our time. Instead, we should read the step, eliminate redundancy in the description, and only write down a streamlined version of the procedure that is detailed enough for us to follow. We should always include diagrams or flowcharts where applicable. While it is recommended that we only write down a simplified version of the experimental procedure, there are a few additional details that we should pay special attention to. First, we should always include important safety reminders. When a step involves the use of a hazardous chemical or a potentially dangerous operation, the manual will provide safety reminders. We should always include those and highlight them in our notebook, so that while performing the experiment, we are fully aware of the potential danger of the step. Some experimental protocols list safety hazards and waste handling instructions at the end of the procedure. That's not very useful. They must be included at the relevant steps in the procedure. After all, knowing that step 5 is dangerous doesn't help you at the end of the experiment. Second, we should reserve ample space for recording observations and measurements at each step. For observations, we can leave some empty space after each step, or alternatively, design about one-third of the page for observations. So, as we are following along the procedure during the experiment, we can record the observations next to the step that it correlates to. If we anticipate the extensive data will be collected during a step, then we should include data tables to record the measurement. Data tables help us organize the measurements, which also makes it easier for the post-lab data analysis. There are a few key points in designing the data tables. First, each table should have a title, so we know exactly what this table is designed for. The header row should include the parameters we will measure, and we get information about which parameters to measure based on our understanding of the procedure. For each parameter, we should also include its corresponding units, so that when recording the data, we do not need to repeat the units for each recorded number. Finally, we should make sure that sufficient space is allocated for all expected measurements. For example, each titration volume always involves two volume measurements, starting and ending volumes. And mass measurements also might involve the mass of the weighing boat and it is likely that you will be making multiple measurements. Keep this in mind as you set up your tables. Which of the following statements are true about the procedure section of a notebook? Keep in mind that we do not need to copy the procedure word for word. Our goal is to present an informative yet concise procedure so that it is easy to follow during the experiment. Additionally, we should always keep ample space in between steps to record observation and measurements as we are performing the experiment. Which of the following are required for a data table? In addition to preparing the data with the title and header row, it is also a good idea to think about the precision of the instrument that we will use during the experiment and the number of significant figures the measurement will have. For example, the burette is precise to 0.01 milliliter, so the readings we will record during the experiment must have two decimal places. We can keep a note in our notebook to remind ourselves. After the procedure, the last section of the lab notebook is the safety data sheet information on chemicals, or the SDS information. SDS information is required for labs that involve hazardous chemicals that we are not familiar with. We will discuss how to record SDS information in a separate video when needed. Which of the following components are required when preparing for the lab notebook? All of the above are required components. To summarize, here is the general organization of the lab notebook. While it is important for us to include all necessary information in the notebook, it is also important to keep in mind that our time is precious and we should refrain from copying the lab manual word for word. Now, you should complete preparing your notebook for the upcoming experiment. Keep in mind that this must be done before you attend the lab, 
and you will not be allowed to work in the lab if your notebook is not properly prepared.